All right. So we got this old skag. Uh, it's got the 18 horse on it. And uh, Dad hasn't used this thing in a couple years, so it's got flat tires. Um, all the tires were flat. We tried to fill them with foam, and it was a no-go. So I figured I would just take the tire off the rim, throw some new tires on it, and be up and run it again after I get the motor going. Well, pulled this off. And this is the sleeve that was on there. And I just wanted to get it off the trailer. So I noticed that I had these, which I believe are from um, probably a snowblower. So the shaft size is the same. However, those rims there have a keyway at that key. And it goes in that slot there. And then there's a C-clip, and that goes there. And that holds it in place, and it holds it from spinning. So this does not have that, and it relies on this pin here all the way through to keep it uh, in and spinning. So I could either tap this hole and put a bolt or a set screw in that, and I could do both sides because there's a hole on both sides, or... If I can drill a hole in this, and if I put a set screw in that, then I would put this washer back on there and this clip to keep it from sliding out. And then that bolt there would only be responsible to making it spin with the shaft. But I'm going to try and drill straight through uh, into this shaft. I don't know if I can drill the shaft. I don't know if my drill bits are anywhere near good enough, but... That's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and drill a hole. And if I can drill through that shaft, then I'll just throw a bolt right through it. And this side will be done. And it will clear everything and the hole there. So, I don't know where I can set you. So let me set you up here someplace. I think... I got you sitting in the propane tank right now. It's actually an air tank at this moment that I've converted, but okay. I think it's pretty good. If it'll work, you'll see it. You'll see it happen here. Okay, so I'll go back in, figure out where we want that hole. I know there's more scientific ways than this. Okay. That's the center. Will that stay? Until I hit something, then I'll have to recheck it again. You just know it. Okay. Try a small hole first. No guarantees that'll even work, but. And now I think it's harder than Frosty's underpants. vicinity that I want to be in so try a bigger these drill bits aren't the greatest so try a bigger bigger bit that is what we need for the bolt Yeah, that's what I thought. 
So we're either gonna have to pilot that hole or um, or we're gonna have to use the set screw idea. Still smaller, because we're hitting on the edges. I still think we're gonna have to go to the set screw idea. Okay, that is that. There's no drilling that shaft. So what we're gonna do We'll go back over to the toolbox and we'll tap this hole and this hole and uh, thread a bolt in from either side. And we'll still use that washer and that snap ring. So I'll walk over there without you. You want to watch me uh, tap it? Okay, hold on. Okay. I'll take you along while I reverse engineer all this. So, we gotta make sure we have a bolt. It's too big for that hole, which we have. And it's an SAE American bolt. Neighbors are home. Lily's probably gonna bark. Their dog Misha is barking. Let's see. Well, what I'm trying to find is another bolt that matches this one so I can thread the hole the same, which that looks the same. So, to be sure of that, Will you guys sit still? Yes, okay. So, we're going to take the Nut off of this one and see if it fits this one. Yes. Okay. So now we got to figure out that size. Okay. So this is metric. So we got to move that. You guys sit there. Possibly. I don't know what I can set on this phone to make it. There we go. We'll move this. Now we have SAE, and uh, you can use a gauge to find thread per inch if you want. So we'll do that real quick so you see that. This is what the thread pitch gauge, which basically means number of threads per inch for the standard American, SAE, or I think there might be another name for it. I call it standard American, but I think there's a whole other name. Um, and then metric is, uh, I believe, threads per millimeter. That might be right. Okay, so find the one that looks fairly close. That one says 18 threads per inch. Okay. And you stick it in there and look at that. That matches perfect. Okay, so we'll go six. Here's 16. See how it doesn't work? 16 doesn't work. 18 did. That's a 14. Okay, and well, anyway, so you just keep trying until you find the one that sits right in there and matches perfectly. So it's an 18 threads per inch. And then you just have to decide the diameter which you could measure it with micrometers or you could use a wrench. And if it's 3 eighths, 3 eighths wrench will fit off. If it's quarter, quarter inch wrench. And so since we're right here, um, 
course I don't have here's a 516 French all right and that fits on there and that's it's a little loose but that's it so it's a 516 18 I know that we're uh, going beyond the scientific realm so then you just find a tap that says the exact same thing whether you know 5 16 18 and you can kind of go like this with it this one looks fairly close and it says 764s I think the light's terrible and no, 5 16 18. Okay. And the other way to know that this works for sure is to go back to the nut that threads on that bolt, right? So set you there. Take the nut. And it's going to be looser on the end because it's tapered. And then it threads on there. So that's the size. Okay. So now how to tap this, right? Because this is so close. Right, I, I can't put a normal T, T end, like one of these normally goes on the end of it, or these, these, not the, these are for the dies, but normally something like this or this would go on there, but there's not even that much room. So I will use a small socket or ratchet that'll go here. Let's see if that 516 is too big. 930 seconds is slightly big. This this toolbox or this drawer here I've been trying to straighten out, so that's not all the it's not all the wrenches. The wrenches actually used to be all in this drawer, but I wanted to, I had two that was the plier drawer here but I got too many pliers for that drawer see they're all the way down there and they're spread all the way out to here so okay so let's see if we can see there's another 5 16 um, probably I need a quarter inch or a small adjustable wrench to turn that Probably one of those drawers way down there. Let's see what we got in this mess here. Got multiple projects going on. Look at that hammer. Isn't that cool? I think it's a body hammer. I don't know. I got it uh, in a pile of trash somewhere. Oh, it was it was out back with all them files, all those files that I cleaned up. Okay, so I don't have any wrenches here in this plethora of a mess. That one's too big. So I guess we're just going to try this. 9.30 seconds, and we'll go easy with it. So we got to put you someplace. Um, maybe here. I don't know. I don't know if I can even get behind you to see. Yeah, that looks all right. And you can't see perfect, but... So keep this straight. Um, you should put a little bit of oil on there which my TV blaster is, where is it? I think I took it upstairs or out to the other mower and that's empty. So we are going to use boiled linseed oil. Yeah, I know, sounds crazy, but anything to reduce friction, right? Just a smidge, just a smidgen. Get all stinkied up. Yeah, so this ought to be interesting because we want to keep that straight. So I might have to go to needle nose vice grips and just turn this shaft here. I do believe that that would probably be One of the smarter things to do. Shut all the drawers. And 
you change your drawers around. You never know where stuff goes. Wrong drawers, guys. Wrong drawers. Okay. So, you could probably use regular ones. I just figured the needle nose would be easy because they're manageable. Okay. Probably could have done this with channel locks as well. Yeah, see how that's... That's just sliding around. So this, this plan might not work well either. Keep it straight. That my fingers are still hurting from when I fell down and mashed them in the wood pile there. So I'm just grabbing the very end here without trying to bend this up. And the first through threads, first few threads in here are tapered on the tap, so I don't want to go too far, but at the same time I have to go far enough that that bolt will thread in without a big to do. So we'll try a couple different tools. Let's see what we got. We have Different tools have different um, grippies, grippy, uh, different metal, different shapes um, of the of the teeth where they grab. I have a set of uh, nice pliers. I don't know where they are. So I got the flat vice grips for more surface area. We got these little wheels w-e-i-l but i don't i think those slip maybe these regular pliers that have two sections here's some channel locks and here's a snap-on set of regular pliers so snap on nothing and i don't want to grab down here and i'm just trying to grab here to see if it grips so that was a no A no. Probably are going to be all no's right down to the other vice grips. No. Well, that's close to gripping, but no. No. Sounds like I'm talking to one of the kids. No. No. Put that down. Get that out of your mouth. See that, that? Now see, that worked. Okay. And see how I went forward and back, forward and back? That kind of clears the, the teeth out of the groove there. The shavings that you're cutting. Okay. And one more probably. Yeah. So that feels like it may have been enough. And we just gotta back her out. Okay, try the bolt. Oh, Lily's mad, she's upstairs. That turns in pretty good, but we want to turn it so it comes through the inside. That looked like 13. Yeah, Lily's mad because she heard me talking. Okay, so that comes through nicely. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to put a nut on this side here to lock it so that it can't come out. So, all right, let's 
Let's just use this one because it yeah, threads on a lot easier. Same thing. Same thing, only different, right? Okay, so there is that. Okay, so do we do both sides? Probably not. No, we don't have to because we're only holding it into the groove. Uh, we're going to put that clip back on the outside of this wheel uh, at least. We'll see what happens on the other side, but we won't put our stuff too far away. That. And we'll go back out there and go. We're back. Can you see? No, I can't. I didn't think you could. So let's move you over here. awful picky. Okay. So, wait the wiggle. That's on. We line the bolt up with the groove, right? And then this washer goes back on there. And the C-clip goes back on there. There we go. Tappity tappity. And now we tighten this one. Hence the reason we have a ratchet wrench, right? Just make sure the nut doesn't bottom out until you're ready for it to. Snug. That one feels good. And then we'll tighten down the nut. And that's just, this is just a lock so that this doesn't back out. It kind of holds against each other, the threads do. And I think I have that. Yeah, that's all the way in. Probably would like to turn that though. I would like to turn that so that it went more roundy, roundy in. There, happier with that. Okay, so we removed this part, replaced that with this bolt, took this spacer out on the inside, and essentially this side is done. We can Jack down. There she is. Now we got a super grippy tire instead of the flatty spinny racetrack tire. <sighs> On to the other side. There's the other side. Somehow, because I had cut the inside of that shaft off, um, I was trying to make it work for something else a while ago. You can see how short it is, that gray piece. Sticks out an inch or two. And this one sticks out like three or four, right? But on this machine, it's, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I made this parts for this vehicle without even knowing I was making them a year or two ago. So, uh, the drive tires are now good. Uh, these front idlers that one in the middle is just a hard but these two are good in the front so that's the only one there that i have to deal with um and i think i might have one of these tires that's fairly new i'll just have to break that one down and put that one on like normal um because there's we tried drilling holes in it fill it with foam like we had seen on 
on some what's it called youtube or something yeah anyway uh-huh okay so it, it worked for them it didn't work for us uh whether we used the wrong kind or didn't put enough in or didn't add enough water because your water activates blah 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 so tomorrow um i put some gas in it um thinking that i would get lucky and maybe the battery would turn the motor over haha ha, after what four years for i don't know how long but uh so i'll either charge the battery or put one like from i have that tractor there that starts might switch them either from that tractor or the other tractor or maybe that tractor we'll see anyway we'll probably just see if it takes a charge but that's it that's basically putting snow blower rims and tires on a skag bye bye stay safe